Martin with Just Add Power, and today we're using JADConfig to set up stacked SG500 switches. Here you can see the full list of hardware for a Just Add Power system on a Cisco SG500 stack. Let's go through these one by one. One receiver per display device, one transmitter per source device, multiple SG500 or SG500X switches. You can have up to eight switches or 400 devices, whichever comes first. The small form factor pluggable or SFP copper or fiber modules to connect the switches together. Just Add Power recommends connecting the switches and a ring topology because in the real world, things happen. Please reference the project planning guide for specifics on which SG500 models are right for the job or contact us at support during the planning phases of the project. You can download JADConfig at our website, www.justadpower.com, under Support and Drivers. In the same section, you will also find control system drivers for AMX, Control4, Crestron, Elon G, NetStreams, and RTI. Download the installer and run through the setup. There are five physical connections that must be confirmed before running JADConfig. Three of them are connections and two are disconnections. Connection 1. The computer is attached to the master unit with a serial cable. Only one unit in the stack will be designated as the master. Connection 2. Port 1 of the master unit is connected to the network. Port 1 on all other units will be blank. Connection 3. The computer is on the same network as the switch. Disconnection 1. Remove all HDMI cables from transmitters. Disconnection 2. The stacking cables must be disconnected from the SG500s so that each unit is in standalone mode. The stacking cables will be connected later as part of JADConfig. Once JADConfig is finished installing, run it as administrator. On the opening screen, select Configure Switch and Devices. If you haven't already, this is the last chance to make the correct physical connections and disconnections. Select the appropriate network interface and COM port, and select the Cisco SG500 series stacked. The username and password will autofill with the default username and password of the switch. When all information is correct, click Next. Now we need to create the switch stack, starting with the master. The computer is already connected to the stack master with the serial cable. Click Create Stack Master. Click Next. The tool will communicate with the stack master and perform initial setups on the master switch. There are four stacking options available. The first option is for if CAT5 cables are being used to stack the switches. CAT5 allows one gigabit of bandwidth or seven transmitters. The second option is for SFP copper or fiber modules between SG500 switches. Under this option, copper allows five gigabits of bandwidth or 33 transmitters and fiber allows one gigabit of bandwidth, or seven transmitters. The third option is for mixing SG500 and SG500X switches in the same stack with SFP copper or fiber modules. The fourth option is for SFP copper or fiber modules between SG500X switches. Both cable types allow 10 gigabits, or 67 transmitters. Select the option that corresponds to the switches and stacking cables that you have. For this installation, that's SG500 on S3, S4. Click Next. You will get a screen confirming that your stack master configuration was successful. Click Next to add more switches to the stack. Now, we add all other stack units as slave switches. Select Add Slave Switches. Read the instructions on screen for adding a slave switch. Then, move the serial cable that is connected to the stack master to the console port of the next switch in line, Unit 2. Click Next once done. The software will check communication with Unit 2 in the stack. When you see the four stacking options again, select the correct option 
and the correct unit number for this stack unit. Click Next. You will get a confirmation message that the stack slave configuration is successful. At this point, you can connect the stacking cables between the master switch and the slave switch. Repeat this process to add more slave switches to the stack until all switches have been assigned a unique unit number. Move the serial cable to the slave unit, choose the stacking option and the unit number, then connect the stacking cable. Each unit must have a different unit number. You can have up to eight units in a single stack. Once all slave units have been assigned, connect the stacking cables. It will take five minutes or more for the stack to configure all of the units. When configuration is complete, the indicator lights on the left side of the switch will show the system light solid on all units, the master light lit on the master only, and the unit lights lit on each piece to denote their unit number. Once this is all true, it means we can move to verify stack. If you have not already, connect the serial cable back to the master unit and click next. Once the software verifies that the stack is in the correct mode, you'll see the stack restart. The current stack configuration shows the number of units in the stack, the type of switch for each unit, and which stacking ports are active or inactive. For this setup, we have five units connected in a ring topology. This means that all stacking ports are active. By clicking on Show Stack Details, you can see the full information on the stack. If not all units in the stack were detected, click back and wait for all units to be properly recognized by the stack master before continuing. Once all details are correct, click Next. At the next window, enter the number of transmitter and receiver ports for each unit in the stack. A unit can have any number of transmitters or receivers on it. Select a default transmitter, which is the transmitter that will be showing on all displays if the system reboots. Set the IP address for the switch, making sure that it is not already in use. This is the IP that the control system will use to communicate with the switch. The default route is already entered from our network, and inner VLAN routing is always enabled. JAPLAN is the IP scheme that will be assigned to the Just Add Power devices. There are four options given, one class A, one class B, and two class Cs. Select a class that is not in use on the network so that the Just Add Power devices have a unique IP range. If a different IP range is needed, select the advanced box and fill in the boxes that appear. When finished, click Next to confirm the details and click Next again to begin configuration. The software will set up the stack with the information provided. The color-coded diagram shows how devices should be attached to the switch. You can see transmitter ports, receiver ports, and control ports. Notice that port 1 on all units is reserved for control. Use the drop-down box to access all unit diagrams. Attach transmitters and receivers to the switch according to these diagrams and click Next. Chad config will go out and discover all just add power devices on the network. Larger systems will take longer to discover all devices. If you run into any discovery issues, please reference the troubleshooting guide that accompanied the setup program. As soon as all of the devices are discovered, it will interrogate which firmware is on each device as well as which port on the switch each device is attached to. This is a way to check to be sure that all of the devices are connected where you think they're connected. All of the discovered devices are presented in a list. Here you can see the attached unit and port, type of device, MAC address, current IP address, and current firmware version. If not all of the devices were discovered, click Rescan. If you're planning on using the image push feature of Just Add Power and want to upload a background image to the devices, select Choose Image from the top corner. The image must be in JPEG format and 24-bit color and will be displayed in 640 by 480 resolution, regardless of the native resolution. You also must use firmware's 5.21D or higher to use image push. Open the desired file and click Next when done. The software will set the IP address on all Just Add Power devices. The more devices there are in the system, the longer this portion will take. This would be a good time to go do something else. Now that the devices are configured, select the firmware version to load. Just Add Power recommends using the latest firmware available, but other options are given. 
If a background image was selected, then firmware A5.21G or later must be used. There is no need to select force firmware unless you've been specifically told to do so by tech support personnel. Select the firmware and click Next. If a background image was chosen, the background patch will be applied first. Afterwards, the software will update the firmware on all Just Add Power devices. Just like it was with configuration, more devices means firmware update will take longer. This is another good opportunity to go do something else. The final screen tells us that configuration is complete and all of the settings on the Just Add Power units. To save a copy of this file, click the Export button and save the file so that you can access it later. The text document that opens gives all of the details of the Just Add Power system, IP settings, port configurations, gateway information, etc. Near the top of the export file is the information for the static route that must be applied to the router to use the Layer 3 functions of Just Add Power. Layer 3 functions include video wall, RS-232 control, CEC control, image pull, slideshow, and on-screen display. Please reference our documentation for a full list of features. Let's close this and head back to JADConfig. And click Finish to close the program. If you run into any issues along the way, please reference the troubleshooting document that accompanied the download, or contact us at support. This has been JADConfig run on an SG500 stacked switch. Thank you for watching.